Gotham City, one of the darkest cities we've ever seen. Gotham City, where violence and crimes run rampant. Gotham City, where villains and bad guys never hesitate to take an opportunity to take over the city. Gotham City, where the police can't save you and a 911 call will only end up with you being unalive. Gotham City, we'll be following around a man named Oswald. Oswald Cobblepot, a.k.a. the Penguin. And we're going to take this journey and see how Oswald becomes the Penguin and becomes one of the most evil and ruthless villains to ever set foot in Gotham City. Batman has another thing coming. Now, before we jump into this and we break down the Penguin on HBO, if you like this kind of content, the DC Universe, if you're a fan of real live action, then the Penguin. Is something you need to watch. So hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and let's jump into it. This is The Penguin, Episode 1, The Recap. Starting off Episode 1, we see the city is up underwater. All of the poor neighborhoods, they have been flooded. The richer areas, they are all right. And at this point, all hell has broken loose in Gotham City, but that seems to be the norm. There's more drugs on the streets. There's gang violence, gang wars. It's a very unsafe place. But if you know anything about Gotham City, it has always been that way. Also in the news article, we see that the Riddler is blowing things up all around the city. So for Oswald, a.k.a. the Penguin, he sees this as an opportunity to start to make his mark. Now, what he does is go and breaks into the Iceberg Lounge. This is a club that was owned by his boss who ended up passing away. Now. His son, Alberto, ends up showing up and catching Oswald in the act because behind this wall, there was some jewels and Oswald was trying to make his stake and claim on the next to the throne, per se. But Alberto shows up and catches him. Oswald points out that Alberto, a young, rich, snobby child who was next in line to take over for his father, does have a little drug addiction. But they're celebrating him becoming the next guy in charge. So they have a little bit of drink. And one thing we're noticing about Oswald is, hey, man, this guy's kind of devious and mysterious. But he may seem and look a little slow. But don't confuse him for somebody on the streets. This man Oswald has a plan. Now that Alberto is the new kingpin of Gotham City, he tosses Oswald a nice little necklace and tells him that my dad, Always said you was a good soldier. But then he starts to go in detail about a new drug that's about to hit the streets and change the market. Right now, drops are the main thing. But you see that he has a pinky ring on. Now, this pinky ring actually belongs to a guy named Sal who is in prison. Now, he was a top dog in one of the mobs also, but he's locked up. And now, Alberto, he has this ring. And it's a show dominance. After hearing all of this information about the new drug and the ring that they got from Sal, I starts to tell Alberto about this low-level drug dealer that he always knew on his block. And he's telling them how he would come around. And Oz was influenced by that. But Alberto, after a couple of drinks and some drops, he hears this and he takes it as a little bit of disrespect. And he laughs in Oz's face. Like, you want to compare me, the new kingpin of Gotham City? To some low level thug dealing gangster? Ha ha ha. But guess who gets the last laugh? Oz does. Because as Alberto is laughing at him, he pulls out his gun, pop, 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 and he lays down the new kingpin. Remember, he was working for Alberto's father. And now he just took out Alberto. The last words we hear from him before the opening credit is. Oz packs up Alberto's body into a body bag, takes some of the jewels, and he's starting to walk down the stairs. But once he gets down the stairs and gets out to his purple Maserati with the gold trim, he sees a couple of kids trying to hijack his rims. So he fires up a couple shots, hits the back of his car, and he catches this young black brother by the name of Vic. Now, this guy, Vic, has a stuttering problem. He's like, wait, 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 what? I, 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 I. And Oz is looking at him thinking, calm down, kid. You know, I was just firing off some shots to scare y'all, but geez, are you all right? What's wrong with you? After seeing that this kid is stuttering, Oz is like, well, 
I'm not going to lie. Alberto's body is kind of heavy. So he tells the young man after he takes his ID, you're going to help me. So they throw the body in the back of the trunk. And now Vic has became a temporary driver for Oz. We see Oz going through Alberto's phone and he sees the shipment of drugs is going to be on Monday, November 18th. And he starts talking about Vic and where he's from because of the license. Now, they're from the same area and he's talking about a corner store where he used to go get a slushy, a little slurpy, depending on where you're from, and mix all the flavors for a suicide. And he tells Vic, that is something you should do. It tastes pretty good. Oz has Vic drive him to a woman by the name of Eve's house. Now we see that Eve is a working lady, but the reason they're here isn't for that work. Oz needs an alibi. Now she does tell him, okay, I can give you an alibi, but it has to be after 10 p.m. Anything before that, she already had prior appointments and she cannot vouch for them. But after 10, we're good. So we see that Oz is connected in the underworld. We also know that he was working with the mob. So being in the underworld is something that he thrives in. Vic is driving Oz around the whole city. We start to see a little bit of a relationship between them two, maybe even a little bit of a bonding moment. But we realize that Oz, he's a man on a mission. And he's also giving Vic a little bit of advice. Like, you need some ambition. If you came and robbed this little junkyard over here for rims and stuff, you wouldn't have been getting shot at. You wouldn't be in this situation. You need to get some ambition. Now, Vic, he ain't really saying much, but he's listening and he's absorbing all of the game that Oz has given him. The next morning, they take the car and they got to drop off this body and put it somewhere else. Once they dispose of Alberto's body into another vehicle, we see Oz reaching into his pocket because he just told Vic to turn around and look at the sunset. Vic is already assuming that he's about to be unalive right here in the junkyard and thrown in the back of the trunk. Now, Oz does say that this would be the most reasonable thing to do because you can talk and you could tell. But he's like, listen, Oz, I can work for you. Anything you need me to do, I can show you I have ambition. So Vic basically talks his way out of this. Now, I told you there was a little bonding moment when they were out eating in front of the fire, burning uh, evidence. Well, Oz says, you know what? I might be able to use you. I told you Oz is a man on a mission. He goes home, he changes up his clothes, gets a little fresh, and now he has to go to the warehouse. Well, it turns out the flood, it messed up a lot of their product. They recovered it, and about 30% of it is, uh, how should I say, a little shitty. But you got to do what you got to do. The whole city was flooded. Well, while this is going on, some of his henchmen, they drag in one of the guys and his hand is all bloody. He didn't got messed up. So he's like, all right, take him in the back. Because at this point, Oz is just trying to recover from the flooding that's happened in the city. Because you got to make that money. You got to recoup when you're working for these mob families. Oz gets called over to the Falcons home. Now, when he gets here, he's going to talk to a guy named Johnny, who is an underboss, and Milos, who is basically the family muscle. And when they sit down, we hear Oz talking about, hey, how's everything going? And he lies and say, we got, well, 70% of the product is back. Can we do this? They're like, no. What we're going to do, we're going to close the warehouse down. The block is too hot. The police are out. It's just going crazy right now. Now, remember, Oz is trying to recoup all of this money. He's like, listen, we can make a lot of money if you just let me continue to run this. And then what does he do? He brings up the plan about what Alberto was talking about, a new drug, and saying, I got a clue a hit on a new shipment of drugs coming in. Now, I can't give you guys all the details, but trust me, if you let me run this out of the warehouse, we'll be able to make millions. While this meeting is going on, Sophia, the sister of Alberto, shows up. Now, she just got out of the Arkham Asylum. I had to do a little bit of research on that, but she just got out of that, and her name is The Hangman. So she's the residential serial killer. Now, she hears everything that's going on, and she does ask Oz a very specific question. Hey, have you heard from my brother Alberto? Now, you see Johnny and them start talking. Like, oh, well, we'll, we'll, find, uh, we'll, we'll find Alberto wherever he's at. So this kind of gives Oz a way to slip out of here. Nice to meet you, Sophia. And he tries to get out of here. Now, you can see how she's looking. She's like, hmm, something ain't right with this situation. So she follows Oz outside. And before he can get in his vehicle, 
She sees there's a bullet hole in the back of the car. She asks for an explanation on that. Then she also says, um, you went to my brother's club. He was like, uh, well, he's kind of trying to get out of this. And she said, well, let's do this. Let's talk over lunch, you and I. He said, okay. She said, let's do it right now. So Oz is a little bit nervous. Now, remember, Vic is still in the vehicle, and he doesn't know what's going on. He was flabbergasted when he seen how big this home was. Once Sophia and Oz go out for this lunch, they start having some conversation. But the big topic is, so Oz, my brother Alberto refused to go with his security, and he said he was going to the lounge. Now, he was also talking about a new product. And when I came into that meeting, you were talking about a new product and didn't mention my brother's name. Isn't it kind of um, a coincidence that you're talking about my brother's plan? So what does Oz do? He said, well, you just got back. How do I know that you're not trying to take your brother's plan? Remember, your brother, he's on drugs. He's just on a little binge. He'll be back. But as they leave this dinner, as we thought and suspected, she whispers in Oz's ear and says, a lot of people underestimated you. I expected more out of you. So she's basically saying, I'm on your trail and I'm not believing what you're spewing. Oz and Vic get on the train and they ride outside of New York. Now, once they get there, there's another vehicle waiting on them. Not the purple Maserati. It's a Volkswagen. They hop out, go into that, and they pull up on this older home. And you hear Oz say, I've never brought anyone here. Well, it turns out it's his mother's home. And she's a mother of three. Now we see Oz on the pictures. And what does he do? He gets some money out of the kitchen cabinet. He's trying to get his mother to go on the run because he took out Alberto. Now she's sitting here and she's like, what? What's going on? And then she ends up seeing Vic. And she's like, who the hell is this in my house? Oz is like, oh, don't worry about it, mom. His name is Victor. He's going to be here to help you out. He's kind of like a nurse. Then we have a heart to heart moment between Oz and his mother. Now she's saying, what's really going on? He said, I killed Alberto. So she says, what are you about to run and hide? What are you, a little pussy boy? Pussy, pussy, pussy. He says, no, I'm not. She says, that's how I raised you? That's not how I raised you to run away and hide. You're not a pussy boy. You're my big boy. I raised you to do what you wanted to do. You killed Alberto because he laughed at you because you wanted to. You the big dog. You're finally getting what you deserve. She always believed in her son, Oswald. And now she can see that fire in his eye. And she's encouraging him to turn it up another notch. Because the city is yours. And Penguin needs to run Gotham. Oswald and Vic go up to the penitentiary. Now, who they're going to visit at the Blackgate Penitentiary? is a guy by the name of Salvatore Moroni. You remember the ring? Well, this is who the ring belonged to. And remember, Sal's in jail. So what Oz is basically doing here is telling them, listen, this is your opportunity to take over. I got some new drugs coming in, and I want you to give me the backing that I need to be able to push this because the family that I'm working for, they ain't trying to be with it. Now, Sal, he's listening. He's like, nah, I'm good. I'm not dealing with that until Oswald gives him his ring back. So now Sal is looking like, how did you get this? He's like, I got it off of Alberto. So this, this is a little motivation for Sal to really reconsider what Oswald is offering. Oz begins to return back to his home. He gave Vic the keys to his other vehicle. It was like, keep your phone on. So as he heads home, he's calling. Where's Vic at? Hey, this is Victor. Leave a message because outside of his house is Sophia and her goons. So she sees Oz and she tells them to go after him. So he's speeding off and now they chasing him through the rain. We like, oh man, it's early, but man, it's getting active. As they chase Oz, he's still making calls. You see the FEMA trucks out here. He pulls over and gets out. So when the goons pull up Sophia's instruments, they're looking around thinking he ran through the FEMA camp because he left his door open. But in reality, he got in the trunk. We're thinking, good, he got away. But once he gets in the car, someone pulls up with a pistol. They tell him to get out. He starts fighting them. He gets that one guy off. And then out of nowhere, someone punches him and the screen goes black. 
Well, Sophia and her crew, they finally caught up with him. And now there's a gun in his mouth. And Sophia, she's like, wait a minute. You ran from us. You told me that you weren't visiting my brother, but my brother is missing. What's going on here? We found the kids that you said were trying to steal your rims. See, the problem with Oz is that car is purple. Or should I say it's plum with gold trim. It's very flashy. So the kids that were out there that were getting shot at that left their friend Victor, they got one of them tied up. So she's asking Oz, who's the liar here? Are you willing to sacrifice somebody else for a lie? Or are you saying that they really are the liar? Now this kid, scared as hell, shaking, tied up, beat up, duct taped around the mouth. He's shaking his head like, no, 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 it wasn't me, man. I I was just trying to steal some rims. But Oz is saying he did it. You can't believe a kid. He's the liar. And well, Sophia, we already know what she's about. Bang, bang. She shot him down. Now they get to torturing our boy Oz. They got this wire and they're about to cut his arm off, slowly going through it. He's like, ah! And out of nowhere, you just hear a vehicle pulling up and it smashes into something and the horn is going off. Once they go over there in the back of the Cadillac, guess who it is? It's Alberto, shot up. And if you look closely, that pinky finger is missing. Remember, the ring was on that pinky finger. And guess who has the pinky finger now? (laughs) Sal does. Well, it looks like Vic actually showed up and did what he was supposed to do. He got the phone call, put the body in the back of the trunk, and drove it over to the house. Now, Oz is saying you could have just like chopped off the pinky and sent that or just took the head. But Vic, he was nervous. And he said, man, I was thinking about doing that, but it was just too much. And I just felt just throwing the whole body in there would make a bigger statement. So he's like, so did Sal know about that? And Oz, we see who he really is. He says the hell with Sal. If Sal don't want to help me, then so be it. But now it looks like he did it. And this is good for his crew, his organization. To make it look like they got their feet back in the dope game. And if don't nobody need me, I don't need them. But how is that slushy? That suicide's pretty good, ain't it? All right, there you go. The recap for episode one of The Penguin. Remember, Oswald has not turned into The Penguin yet. He does have that messed up foot. So I'm just waiting on the episode where we see he gets the name The Penguin. But as of right now, him and Vic, this might be the new Kobe and Shaq. I don't know. But they are making moves. And if you go against Oswald, you might as well count your days because you won't be around long. Let me know what you think about this. I'm ODIJ. I'm excited about this series. It's pretty good to me. And I'm ready for episode two. Remember, these episodes will start dropping on Sunday. This first one was just on a Thursday. So if you like this kind of content, these breakdowns, recaps, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on a beat, boy. Thank you.